Greetings to all aviation enthusiasts. Today we're talking about the legendary Tu-144 and Concorde. Both airplanes surpassed their time and both have gone from the heights of fame. So why did this happen and who was better, the Soviet Tu-144 or the Franco-British Concorde? Despite the external similarities between the Concords, the Tu-144 and Concorde were quite different airplanes with very different fates. The Tu-144 took off first, on December 31, 1968. Concorde made its first flight in March 1969. These flights marked the end of a race that could be compared to a space race, Europe, represented by Great Britain and France, competed with the Soviet Union for the right to be the first to create a supersonic passenger aircraft. However, despite taking the lead at the start, the USSR was unable to build an aircraft that would meet the declared parameters for range and, most importantly, economy. As a result, after flying on the Moscow Alma at a route for only a few months, the Tu-144 fell behind. Concorde, which lagged behind it by only two months, served until 2003. The idea of building such an airplane appeared immediately after the military learned to overcome the speed of sound. However, in order to create a supersonic passenger aircraft, it was necessary to develop many new technological solutions, it was so different from military projects. Safety was not the only issue, for example, a bomber does not fly at supersonic speed all the time, it only accelerates at certain stages of the flight, whereas a passenger plane must fly at such a speed for most of the time it is in the air. This required new engines. When the USSR joined the supersonic race, of course, not only research institutes but also intelligence agencies became a source of new technologies. This competition was not so much economic as political. However, there is no direct evidence that the USSR could have copied the Concorde. Be that as it may, both aircraft were indeed very similar externally, but there were also many differences between them. The Tu-144 and Concorde were made according to the same aerodynamic scheme, a tailless design. It lacked horizontal tail surfaces that would create extra resistance and hinder movement at twice the speed of sound. Both aircraft had a delta wing with low aspect ratio and a very complex shape. If you look at both aircraft from the front, you can see that the wing tips are drooped down, and the wing itself is curved in a special way. Such a wing straightened out at supersonic speeds. Technologically and in terms of wing shape, the Concorde differed from the Tu-144. Its shape was more streamlined, with smoother curves. The Tu-144's wing was more reminiscent of a military aircraft's wing, it was slightly angular. Both aircraft were equipped with a nose that could be lowered. This was necessary so that the pilots in the cockpit could see the runway during takeoff and landing. The glider of both aircraft was designed for flight at a speed, twice that of sound. Unfortunately, at this speed, the aircraft is in different physical conditions, and therefore, creating a universal glider is almost impossible. During takeoff and landing, both Concorde and Tu-144 were forced to increase the angle of attack to raise the nose of the aircraft. This helped to keep it in the air, but at the same time, the engines worked at greater power. As always, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future updates. Thank you for watching.